Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna do a product review of the Adidas cycling shoe. And if it's a shock to you that Adidas produces cycling shoes, well, Adidas actually has a very long history of manufacturing quality cycling shoes. In fact, my first pair of what I would consider very functional and high quality cycling shoes were Adidas. This was back in the 90s and the model was known as the Bassano. They were a little bit of a departure visually from everything else that was out there because they weren't just black. <laughs> they were black and white with kind of like red and yellow accents. They had a lacing system with a Velcro enclosure. The sole was made out of a look what looked like a carbon nylon weave. All I know is that they worked. It was the first time that I had a pair of cycling shoes in which my feet would not fall asleep because everything I had tried, whether I was uh, doing toe clips or clipless pedals, caused my feet to fall asleep. So impressed was I with the Bassanos that I purchased his sister shoe, the Brunero. Similar technology, just slightly different in terms of appearance. In fact, I would say the Brunero was more traditional looking than the Bassano. I wore both of those shoes out and when I got ready to replace them, Adidas had a new model out with a very different enclosure system and technology, these were known as the Adistar. And the big deal about the Adistar was, well actually there are two things that made them awesome. One of them was that they were really, really lightweight and the other one was that their footbed was said to be so thin that it brought your foot closer to the pedal spindle, which was supposed to aid in power transfer, pedal feel, that kind of stuff. All I know is that they continued to work and I love them. After wearing out the Addy Star, I started looking for my next pair of Adidas shoes and Adidas had recently announced we're no longer producing cycling shoes. In fact, word on the street was that Mavic had purchased the patent from Adidas. And when you looked at the Mavic Zilium Ultimate, they looked an awful lot in resemblance in functionality and materials used to the Addy Star. In fact, they were very hard to tell apart with the exception of the branding. So I decided at that point that I was going to cross over and I was going to become a Mavic guy. So much so that I enjoy Mavic shoes that I continue to purchase them, culminating with my most recent Mavic acquisition, the Cosmic Ultimate. Now, about two years ago, Adidas announced that they were going to be getting back into the cycling shoe thing. But when you looked at the shoes, they didn't look like the Adistar or like the Zelium Ultimate. They kind of like looked more like the Bassano. They were kind of like a little bit of a throwback design. And I thought, eh, maybe not. I'm very comfortable with what I'm doing. But then the shoes went on sale and I decided that I was going to jump all over them. They were these models right here with the funky yellow sole, white and kind of like a fabric type material. And while I can't say that they had all of the performance and technological features of modern cycling shoes, I was happy to try them out. And right around the time that I purchased these, these also went on sale. Adidas calls these the road cycling shoes. And I purchased these. So if these two Adidas shoes were to have a baby, they would be that shoe right there, which came in the mail today. I have not ridden them yet, but they're the same exact model as the road cycling shoe. So what I'll do in this video is I'm going to give you my impressions of these shoes. All right, let's go. Over the past year, Adidas cycling shoes have been part of my shoe rotation. I'm going to discuss my experience with these, both the laced road cycling shoe. Those are the white ones, as well as the ball road cycling shoes, also known as the parlay or Parley, those are the black ones. I'll talk about the ease of getting them on, how secure they are once you get them on, how they work and respond in vigorous cycling conditions. I'll talk about the lace system versus the boa system, their comfort, quality of materials, and overall value. The lace shoe is very easy to get on. There's no forcing or wrestling. Your feet just simply slip right in. There's zero resistance. Now, once they're on, the insert is cushier than normal cycling shoes, I would say. They kind of feel like a nice, comfortable pair of sneakers with soft materials. 
The lace system, however, leaves a lot to be desired. They don't hunker down as much as like, let's say the boa strap or even a ratchet system. It almost feels like your foot can move around in them a little bit too much. I also wouldn't want these on for sprinting or for climbing out of the saddle. And keep in mind, it's not like, you know, you can reach down with a boa system and cinch them up before you really go on an attack or even with the ratchet system. There's no, let me get these a little bit tightened. Once they're on, they're on. Now, I will say that there is a nice tab to really tuck the laces under, which they're not flapping around as you ride. The materials are nice and the construction is okay. The white does get dirty, but it can easily be cleaned up with Mr. Clean Magic Eraser in water. So no riding in inclement weather or gravel with these on, at least not the white one. Now, in terms of value, at $180 for the retail, they are not a good value. Now the sale price at $80, I would definitely jump all over them. I feel that like that is a fair price for them. They're just okay, nothing special. Now when it comes to the parlay, getting these things on is literally a wrestling match. The opening is very small. I have to pull on both tabs simultaneously to get them on and force my foot in. The single ball dial has a big job to do and one of the things that I had to do was once I got my foot in and I started tightening them up, I'd have to kind of like flex my foot and tighten again. You can actually feel the soft material compress against the closure, which is actually very nice. It has a nice thick sock feel to it. The materials are this kind of a soft fabric that is just okay, it doesn't scream quality, but the stitching is janky, or what we'd call mammy made. I was not impressed with this, and it actually looks like they could fall apart, so let's actually hope that it lasts. Now in terms of value, at $250 retail, they are not worth it in my book. On sale between $80 and $100, yes, again, nothing special, but I do believe that that is a good value for them. Now, as cycling shoes go, they do the trick. The sole is adequately stiff, certainly not as stiff as a full carbon sole. The ball system works much better than the laces do. Ventilation on both shoes is good, even though they don't have vent holes on the bottom. Serious cycling shoes would be like the Mavic Cosmic that I shared with you guys earlier with a more secure fit and proper stiff carbon sole. And again, I got to stress that while you're out riding on the road, both shoes are very comfortable. They do the trick. I, I didn't feel like, oh my gosh, I, I can't wait to get these things off. I've never felt like that with them. I've highlighted the issues that I felt that I had with them in terms of number one, getting the parlay on and then the laced shoe, the difficulty in making sure that I got it snug enough. And like I said, just because of the material construction, I wouldn't want either one of those if I was doing really vigorous things like sprinting or climbing out of the saddle. But that's my interpretation or that's my product review of the Adidas cycling shoe. Let me know what you think. What's your history with Adidas cycling shoe? What do you look for in cycling shoe? Let us know in the comment section below. As always, our aim here at the channel is to inform, instruct, inspire. Be blessed.